Well, I want to welcome you back to the third week of our series entitled Promises. Promises are something that you pay closer attention to when you're really in need of those promises, when you're looking for what you can count on and what you can really put your trust in. And our God is showing us through this series that he is faithful and that he can be trusted. I want you to know that I'm praying for you and I'm excited about the ways you as a church family have continued to reach out to one another, to connect to one another. And as always, because of who you are as a church, we've been able to make a difference in this time. We have had outreaches where we're able to help those that were in need and supply food. In fact, we're gonna do another one of those outreaches here coming up before Easter where we're gonna help families that need some encouragement, that need a special moment and help them with an Easter meal and have some things for their children. And so we're really, really excited about that, providing, if you will, Easter in a box to encourage families. And we believe we're gonna get a chance to encourage hundreds of families because of who you are as a church family. And so we're gonna have that Easter outreach here this week. We also, leading up to Easter, I wanna encourage you that even though we're not meeting in person, we're going to celebrate our risen Lord Jesus Christ together. And I have a message that I'm excited to share with you. So I'm gonna encourage you to invite your friends to come online. In fact, I'm gonna do a special moment for a Good Friday communion time together. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to prepare those communion elements as best you can. And, and so get some kind of maybe grape juice or something and some kind of cracker or bread or some way that you as a family can celebrate Good Friday with me. We'll have a couple of worship songs and then we'll take communion together and I'll share with you some thoughts about the power of Good Friday. And yet we're continuing as a church family to reach out in multiple ways. We have a blood drive that'll be coming up here later this month on the 20th and the 21st. Encourage you, if you didn't get a chance to be a part of our last blood drive, that was a very powerful, powerful thing that you mobilized so quickly to help with that. So lots and lots of things going on from even people just reaching out to one another. I heard about a, a lady who was very sick and just dealing with even having her, her yard mowed and that there was one of our members who just went out and mowed her yard and there was a prayer team a moment where they were praying for someone who was really concerned about losing their job and just in a matter of moments, even as they were praying like 10 minutes into uh, this moment that she found out that she was gonna keep her job and I could go on and on about the testimonies and the prayers that God has answered and the way we're continuing to reach out to one another and love one another. One of the other things I'm excited about is uh, we're continuing to pray for medical professionals. This Wednesday at 6 p.m., if you know a medical professional or you are a medical professional, then I'm gonna have a moment to pray for them as in our specific area, things are intensifying and they're concerned, not just about themselves, but also bringing it home to their families. And uh, so there's a lot going on there. So we're gonna pray. We've been able to do some things to reach out and provide some things, some snacks and some food on the different floors of some of our hospitals to help encourage them, let them know we're praying for them. Some practical things like providing Tupperware for them to be able to store their masks in so that they can be used multiple times. And so I just, I just wanna tell you that you're making a difference and we're making a difference together. And I believe this week, this week's message, if you have your Bibles, I'm gonna ask you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And this weekend, we are celebrating Palm Sunday. This big moment that kicks off the Holy Week. And this moment is so significant, yet here's what I found that a lot of times it's a, it's a phrase, it's a thought, it's Palm Sunday, it's, it's Holy Week, it's leading up to Easter and we have these special services and we take communion and we, we think about this moment, but for a lot of people, maybe you've heard about it, 
you, you've thought about it. Maybe you've actually gone to church and heard Palm Sunday. Maybe you've even been in children's church and waved these palm branches or some point, maybe Sunday school, or you've had a special Palm Sunday service. Maybe you're just hearing about it for the first time. But uh, what I found is a lot of times we, we know the, the moment or we know about the moment. We know about this historical time, but we don't really understand this. And here's the thought about Palm Sunday. The entire moment of Palm Sunday is a promise. It's a promise to us. Now, now there's some things within this that are quite fascinating as God actually 500 years before the moment that I'm gonna read to you, 500 years, God says, this is what's going to happen. Jesus comes and fulfills what the word of God says. And, and I, I know that, uh, again, when moments are shaky and there's challenges a lot of times, again, you're, you're looking for that which you can really trust. What, what are the facts? What can I hold on to? Well, God's word in multiple times, but su specifically in this moment, 500, roughly 500 years in Zechariah 9, the Bible prophesies the exact moment of Palm Sunday and talks about what Jesus would do. And so there's a, there's a prediction, if you will, but it's more than a prediction. It's more than just saying, here's what's going to happen. It's a promise. And it's promise of Palm Sunday, the promise found in it, I believe can encourage you. I believe it can encourage any of us at any time, but it can really encourage us in the moment that we're living in now. I wanna give you a little scene. I grew up in Northeast Texas and in my backyard, I had a basketball goal. And I, I wish I would have had like my kids have where there's a pavement and a nice goal, but. Not, not where I grew up, it was out in the country and there was, uh, there was dirt there. Now there was no grass because me and my friends and my dad and myself were out there shooting baskets all the time. And I, I can remember out there playing and I would have this moment where I, I would dream up as if that I was taking like the final shot in a big game. And it was just me. And I mean, we were, we, were, we were three points down from victory. And there I would back up to the three-point line. And man, I could picture the crowd there and, you know, the games on the line. And, and, and I just, I, I would call my shot and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win this game right now. And, 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 you know, you shoot the final shot right there in that moment. You know, still to this day, I like to call the shot. My kids, they, they laugh about it because every time we watch like these shows like The Voice, then I always kind of, I, I, I believe I can call out who's going to win. A lot of times I'm right. They get mad about it, but I can pick the, the winner or when we watch these cooking shows or cooking competitions, you know, you know all of us like to look into a situation and be right about the outcome. But I want you, as you think about Palm Sunday for a moment, to not just think about calling the shot like an athlete, like Babe Ruth pointing to the outfield and saying, I'm gonna do this and then performing it or even looking into the future. You know, a lot of people are looking to someone who can predict when the economy will come back or predict when this thing will change or predict the outcome or predict the bell curve. Well, Jesus here in this moment is doing more than just predicting the future. Jesus is making a promise about the future. He's making a promise of what is available to us. And so let me set the scene for you in this moment. In this moment, most commentaries and most historians and theologians believe why, because this was not just the leading up to Easter week in this time period, there, this is the beginning of Passover and there would have been estimated 2 million people in Jerusalem. Jesus now comes into Jerusalem to fulfill all of this prophetic picture and we all know ultimately Jesus is coming to have this most monumental moment in human history where he becomes this sacrifice for us, where he dies on the cross and then we all know ultimately he will raise from the dead. But as we look at this scene here, I think it's very powerful as they approached Jerusalem and came 
to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. Look at this, go to the village ahead of you. At once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. I've always been real keyed into that. I wonder the owner there, and then these guys are just taking this. And so it it even just speaks to, I I think about that a lot of times when I feel the nudge and the urge of the Lord, you know, to to give. I even just think about that. The Lord needs it. This is is amazing. That person who's the owner uh, of this cult has no idea how they're participating with the large plan of God. The Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Again, Zechariah chapter nine. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and they placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. It's as if there was like a saddle or something there, putting it on there makes sense. A very large crowd, though, spread their cloaks on the road. You you may want to make a note of that. Okay, fulfilling prophecy, riding on a colt, a donkey. Okay, wait a minute. They're spreading their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees. We know that these are palm branches that are being cut from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went out ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem and the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So we see this scene here and we begin to think, okay, wait a minute. There's a lot happening here. And you're telling me that this is a promise to us. Maybe this Palm Sunday weekend, the promise of Palm Sunday, it has meaning any time of the year, but it could have so much meaning if you understand what is being said to us, what promises are being given to us. And and my goal here is not just let's extrapolate this and let's pull out these things and let's talk about them. But my goal is though that the promise is so real that it changes how you live. But as I said the first week with this Promises series, if you don't know what's being promised, if you don't really know the promises and the picture and the scene, we kind of went into the scene, crowded street, Jesus getting a colt and Jesus riding in on a donkey, cloaks being laid out, palm branches, people waving them, And all of this shout of Hosanna, it just sounds kind of like a a, a biblical Sunday school lesson, but you may not know the promise behind it for you. The promise. I want to just ask you this question. Do you you know why Jesus was riding a donkey? I mean, you may or may not have ever participated in a Palm Sunday worship service, but do you know why he was riding a donkey? Do you know why they spread their their cloaks out and their clothes out before Jesus? Do you know why they were waving palm branches? Do you know why that was even happening? And then this word, this word Hosanna, what does that have to do with everything? Do you know why? Well, I believe when you know why, and then when the word of God begins to be real to you and you understand the promise, and then here's the most powerful thing, When God's word becomes something that you don't just know the story, you don't just know the meanings, but you begin to let it transform and change your life. I know in my life, I can think back to moments where where it became more than just religious duty, where it became more than just understanding the stories. There, there, There are seasons and moments where I look back in my life, having grown up myself with these stories, But when the word of God was no longer just a story, but it was a promise. And I think about it even now in this moment, how you have to, you have a moment. You know, one thing that a moment like this, something we've never experienced is unprecedented. You know what it really does? It reveals to us where we put our trust. 
It reveals to us what are we really anchored to. It, 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 it's not something any of us want, and I'm not in any way glorifying that this is something I want or you want. What I will say, though, it's going to give us a chance to really exercise our faith in what God has said and in his promises. And when we come out of the backside of it, we'll have a testimony that through the test, the promises of God are true. And you say, okay, I wanna know what those promises are, the promises of Palm Sunday. Number, number one, why did he ride a donkey? Well, well, the reason he rode a donkey is it means he comes to bring us peace. He's coming to bring peace. You say, well, why does riding a donkey mean that he came to bring us peace? Well, if you let the Bible interpret the Bible, we do know just from the culture of that time that a, a ruler who was coming in way of war would ride a horse, would come in with all the regalia. But, but in this setting, we let the Bible interpret the Bible and the Bible tells us that in fact, that David was a man of war, and this is, this is when the handoff happens that his son Solomon, who would build the temple, his son, who because he had not had his hands in war, he rode a donkey, a symbol of peace. You say, well, that's a great intriguing fact. Why is it important to us? Well, we can't say it enough during this time that how important it is that we allow Jesus Christ, who came with the promise of peace, he himself is peace, and peace is not available to us unless we find it in him. Unless we find it in him. One of the things recently now, even coming as we're walking through this, again, as medical professionals, I have a friend of mine, named Alex, who came to know Christ early in the life of Milestone Church. He was, was someone who actually attended church, was around the things of God, but he had some things holding him back. And we developed a friendship. And I'll never forget the day when on a very not peaceful night where there was like tornadic activity in our community, there at his house and at his home, he received Christ. And he, and he now, and, and so now, as he is an emergency medicine room doctor, he's now on the front lines of the chaos. And, and I texted him the other day, I said, I want you to know I'm praying for you constantly. He said, that brings me comfort. But the exciting thing about Alex is because he's received Jesus, he's now serving others and he's walking into chaos and where people are afraid, his coworkers and even the people he's serving, he walks in differently because he has Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Did you know I even heard about some of the nurses in our church that are going to New York City in the middle of some of the most intense uh, things going on around this virus. There's go they're going, a whole handful of them, and we had pictures of them, and they're, they're going to serve. Did you know that they're, they're going into a chaotic situation and we're going with them through prayer and we're praying for God's protection. But I know this, you can only go into the battle if you know that Jesus Christ provides for you peace. Many, many people concerned about their economic situation. The challenge is Jesus is our peace. He brings peace. And a lot of times it's not in the ways that we expect through the external, he brings it in the internal. The second thing that we gotta ask is, why were they throwing their coats down? Do you know the answer to that? Well, why, why were they throwing their coats down? Well, it means that he's the king. If you will, it's if that they are rolling out the red carpet for a king. Now, for a lot of them, they thought Jesus, when he said, I'm gonna come in this way and I'm gonna come as a king, a lot of them would think that he's gonna come and overthrow these Romans who have been bringing all of this pressure and tyranny and, and, and just dominating their world. But Jesus does make this statement that though he comes to bring peace, he is still a ruling and reigning king. We let the Bible interpret the Bible. You think about a moment in the Old Testament where there was a king named Ahab who was doing all kinds of evil. And God finally said, you know what? I wanna put a stop to this evil. And then there's this king named Jehu 
who is now inaugurated as king. And as he comes in to be made king, they lay down their coats and they inaugurate him and they roll out, if you will, the red carpet. Why are they throwing down their coats? Why are they putting their cloaks there in front of why Jesus is saying, I'm coming to rule, I'm coming to reign as king. You say, what does that have to do with my personal life? Why is that a promise? Well, it's a big promise. You know, in moments of chaos and in moments of challenge, we also not only are looking for peace, we're also looking for who's ultimately in charge. Who's the authority? And what happens to us is when we have tried to set ourselves up as the one who can fix our situations and we can be the one in control of everything and is in those moments that we realize, you know what, the only way I'm gonna feel safe is if I allow the control to be outside of me. I don't know where you're at, but I will tell you this, one of the things that I find the most confidence in, early in this thing, I felt as if Jesus said to me, will you let me lead? Will you ask yourself that question? Are you letting Jesus lead? Are you letting him lead in the situation? Are you letting him guide your directions and your thoughts regarding your business, your kids, your homeschooling, all the stuff that you're doing? Are you allowing him to rule and reign as king? Because when we ultimately say you're in control and we put you at the highest place of our life, it brings a lot of confidence into our lives because we can rest in, be assured of the fact that someone greater than us is in charge. I wanna encourage you with this thought. Jesus knows everything about your life. He knows everything about your future. He knows everything about what's going on in your life. And he is fully capable of leading you to the next place he's called you to. The next one is, I ask you the question. Now this is one of the most common cultural symbols in this whole thing. And when we celebrate Palm Sunday is, Palm branches, that's why we call it Palm Sunday. This is really funny, but have you ever thought about why we have palm branches? Well, the reason is it means that he's coming to bring victory. He's coming to bring victory in our lives. Does it mean we won't have challenges or situations or circumstances that come our way? No, but it does mean this, for the one who's letting Jesus lead, for the one who has made this entry into our lives and come to bring peace and we're allowing him to rule, we're allowing him to reign, then one of the things that happens when we allow him to rule and reign is he brings victory into our lives. I, I wanna say something to you as I even thought about it this week in praying. I thought, what's the best thing I could tell you as we celebrate Palm Sunday? Isn't it amazing how all these promises are so right where we live right now? I thought about what's the best thing I could tell you. You're gonna get on the other side of this. God's going to see you through. You may not hear that on the news. You may not hear that from any input you're getting around you, but I will tell you this, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, according to 1 John. There's a victory that overcomes whatever circumstance we face, and it's not our faith in ourselves. It's not our confidence in ourselves. It's our faith and our trust in Jesus, in the fact that he brings us into victory. It's a little cliche, and you've heard it, but in the end, ultimately, no matter what, for the one who has placed their full trust and their full faith and their full confidence in Jesus, we always are led into triumph and victory. You may not know this. I know, I, you know what's amazing about the Bible, if I have seen it, I don't really remember it. But in my time studying this, I thought it was amazing that in the book of Revelation, when John in the book of Revelation peered into heaven, and one of the most common verses that we all know is that there's every tribe, every tongue, every person gathered. And they're in these white robes and you look into heaven, one of the scenes that he saw was that they were waving palm branches. Well, what is that? That's like an encouragement from these cloud of witnesses who are in heaven who are saying, 
that God is ultimately victorious in our lives through Jesus. So I wanna tell you this, you're gonna get on the other side. I know that may sound like words. In fact, for a lot of us, sometimes we feel like, you know, is that just like positive thinking? Is that just, let's find something positive to look at? Well, positive things are better than negative things. But this is not just hyperbole or preacher positivity. This is a promise from Palm Sunday that we wave palm branches on this day to remind us that our Jesus has conquered death. He has conquered hell. He has conquered the grave and that we're ultimately victorious in him. Here's the final thing. Why did they say Hosanna? This word Hosanna, what does that mean? It's like a a, a Bible word. Where, what does it mean? Well, here's the promise. And this is probably the most important promise of all. They were saying Hosanna because Hosanna means he saves. He saves us. You see, during this Passover celebration, they would have been seeing this thing called the halal. It comes from Psalm 113 to Psalm 118. And it literally has this meaning from the Hebrew word Hosanna. It means he saves. You know what the encouragement for all of us is this? That if we want confidence, if we want this, this, this Jesus who brings peace, who brings authority that's bigger than any other authority, who brings this salvation that comes to us, if we want it, then we can't look to save ourselves. One of the things that I think is one of the biggest false thinking in our culture is that if I do the right religious stuff, then I'll be saved if I do the right religious things. Did you know that thought is not a new thought? That there is a crowd of people here who are going, uh, he's this prophet or he's this Jesus. Did you know the same crowd, by the way, that's waving branches would later in this holy week say crucify him. There's so many in this crowd who are still caught up in this idea of their culture that if I do the right religious things, and I wanna to talk to someone right now that this crisis in this Palm Sunday is different for you because you're looking for where do I find salvation? Where do I find hope? How do I know that I have victory? How do I know that I have these promises? And you're realizing that just simply having done the religious motions just simply doing like these right things, and you may have been to church or you may even know about God and you've done these religious things, that doesn't save you. That doesn't make you right with God. And, and, and due to the slowing down of our culture, you've had some moments to really investigate because everything's calmed down and you're alone with yourself and you're realizing, not only do I need peace, I'm not at peace with God. You've had some blowups in your family. You know, it's just kind of like, man, we're just kind of out of our routine and we're around each other. And maybe you've been trying to medicate some of the pain of not having work and activity and other stuff to keep you busy. Can I encourage you with this? This is true all the time, but it's very true right now. And that is nothing else will bring the, the peace and the life in your soul outside of Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who saves us. I love the story of Robin. I love her story. And just a few weeks ago, the story of what Jesus did to save her, because Jesus said, I came to seek and save that which is lost. So he's looking to come into the lives of any person who puts themselves in a place of receptivity. Watch Robin's little story that she sent me about her change and transformation by accepting Jesus Christ. A couple of weeks ago, I was attending service at Milestone and God moved my heart so heavy that I began to cry. He was drawing me into him and in that moment, I dedicated my life to him. Since then, I've gotten baptized and the experience was absolutely amazing. Every day I pray and I thank him for allowing me to grow and to become the person that I knew that I've always wanted to be. Let me tell you what's so powerful about Robin's story. She's the first one in her family, right in her direct family, when she was baptized, they mentioned this to, 
to give her life to Christ. And that's going to affect generations, the decision that she made. But she made that decision based on the fact that she heard for herself for the first time, this Jesus, he wants to save me. He wants to change me. He wants to come into my life. That's what makes these promises of Palm Sunday when you see everything God is communicating to us. And and, and Jesus, he's doing it. God's calling his shot. Jesus is fulfilling it all. And it's all happening right there. Did you know that after this big triumphal moment, the fact is things are going to look really bad and dark for Jesus. He's going to be arrested. He's going to be tried. He's going to be betrayed by the people closest to him. And he's going to die a horrific death. And it's going to look like at a moment in the story, before we celebrate Easter and we see the victory, it's going to look like he can't have victory. It's going to look like all is lost and many of the people around him because they don't understand what's going on. They're going to think it's over. Did you know the reason that we celebrate this week is to remind ourselves that even when it looks like that we can't have victory, that we can't have life, that we can't have peace, See, Jesus gives us this promise on the front side of all of those challenges. You you may be saying, Jeff, I look at my life right now and I've lost my job. I've I've got all this stuff going on. I mean, it's like I want to believe that God has a plan. I want to believe it's going to be okay. I want to believe what you're saying, that he's bringing peace and he's a king in charge of everything and he's going to bring victory and I want to believe all that. But, but I'm having trouble really connecting it. Well, did you know Jesus goes to great lengths to walk through all of the suffering of the week that we celebrate this week to show us when it looks like all hope is lost, he still will fulfill his promise. Can I tell you this? You can trust him. And I want to encourage somebody right now who's listening to me, who you're in that place where you're not right with him. And this time has given you the opportunity to really know that at a deeper level. And I'm gonna encourage you just to take a step of faith and say yes to Jesus. Say, Jesus, you can have my life. In fact, right where you are listening to me, you can just right now bow your head and just say, Jesus, I bring my whole self to you. I bring my life to you, my mess ups. I bring you my successes. I bring you right now, even where I'm at in this current situation, I bring my whole life. And I know I have made mistakes and I've missed the standard. And I know I can't do enough right things to make myself right with you. So I come to my moment of surrender and I say, Jesus, here's my life. You can have it. And you can just pray these words. You pray them with me. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. You're not just a historical story, Jesus. You just tell him, you're not just a story about this Jesus who rode in as this victorious reigning king. I make you my Lord and Savior. I make you my Jesus. And I believe that you've come into my life and I surrender my life right now to you. And I want to be saved. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, then the Bible tells us you are saved. And now you need to take some steps to now know what it means to follow him. And we want to help you take those steps into that number right there on the screen, 817-406-7470. You can text meet Jesus to that number and we'll follow up with you. I have a book I want to send you called Closer that'll help you learn how to have a relationship with this Jesus that loves you so much and has all these promises for you. I want to pray for a second group of people. You know Jesus. But even though you know him, you're in a setting and maybe you're one of those medical professionals I'm looking forward to praying for you this week. Maybe you're having challenges at home or maybe you're praying for a husband's salvation. I saw in our chat, on our live chat, that there were people praying for for family members and for their spouse's salvation. Did you know Jesus saves? We celebrate on Palm Sunday, Hosanna. He is the one who saves. Maybe you're praying about a job or a health condition, whatever it is, you can text prayer 
to that number on the screen and we have a team of people ready to pray for you and ready to serve you and ready to help you. I'm excited about our opportunity here this week to have our special Good Friday service and we're also gonna celebrate the risen Jesus. We're not gonna let the inability we have to gather physically to hamper our celebration. So let's begin to invite our friends so that we can gather together. Thank you for your continued generosity and your love for others. It's making a difference. And know this, I'm praying for you every single day. I love you and God bless.